Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install liquid metal into your PS4 Pro. We're gonna be replacing the whole thermal paste that Sony puts in, and we're gonna be replacing it with some high quality liquid metal. The liquid metal we're gonna be using is Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot, and this is what I recommend. You're also gonna be needing a specialized screwdriver and some bits. All of those are included in our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver that allows you to disassemble not just your PS4 Pro, but all other electronic devices. Links are gonna be in the description box and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and click the bell next to the subscribe button. That costs you nothing and it helps us out a lot. Let's get started. giving away this PS5 Digital Edition and this extra controller. Before we start, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a spoiler. I did some thermal testing before replacing the thermal paste with liquid metal. And during idle, the system was running at about 34 degrees and under stress running doom, it got as hot as 44 degrees, particularly in the center of the system where the APU chip sits. And that would be the part that's glowing orange. And now I'm gonna show you guys what the after test results look like on the right side of the screen. And as you can see, there's a big drop in temperature. During idle, we saw a temperature drop of about three degrees. And during peak times and stress while this thing was running doom, we saw a temperature drop of about six degrees Celsius, which is a huge drop. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I did it so you can do it yourself. So we're taking this PS4 Pro apart to install liquid metal instead of the thermal paste that it has right now. We're gonna need to take out the motherboard. And there's some screws here at the back. If you have a 7000 or 7015 series, like this one here, there's gonna be three screws that you have to remove. But on newer 7100 and 7200 or 7115, or 7215 systems, you only need to remove two screws. We're gonna grab our FastTech Pro Auto Kit and we're gonna hook up a Torx T8H bit on it, which is already on the driver. We're gonna remove these three screws. Two are gonna be hidden under warranty stickers, which you might have to remove, but on this one, they were already removed years and years ago. And one screw is hidden underneath the hard drive cover. And again, guys, this automatic screwdriver is sold on our website at fasttechstore.com. Once we have these screws out, we're gonna be able to remove the, bat, the bottom panel like this, and then just lift it up like that. We're gonna have to remove all these screws. Some of them are Phillips, some of them are Torx T8. We're gonna remove the fan connector as well. We're gonna remove these disk drive cables. This one has a clip, these ones just pull out. We're gonna remove the eject and the power button. And there's a Phillips screw here for the hard drive that we're gonna remove. We're gonna switch to a Phillips size one on our FastTech Pro Auto Kit. And this kit's gonna save you a lot of time because otherwise you'd have to manually undo all of the 500 screws that are in this system. The PS4 is still warm from my testing. But if you can't handle the heat, you gotta stay out, out of the kitchen, if you know what I mean. Now we're gonna remove these cables because they will get in the way. These are the antenna signal cables. They just lift up, do not pull them to the side. And if you do, do not comment on my YouTube channel saying that you broke it, because it's your fault. There's another screw for the hard drive. It's a Phillips screw, we're gonna remove that. So we can pull out the hard drive like this. And that's the hard drive right there. Now we're gonna switch back to our T8. 
But before I do that, I'm just going to unroute this cable and get it out of the way. Same with this one. And now we're going to remove the Torx T8 screws. Now this plate is going to be lifted out like that. Now we're going to see this plate and it also has Phillips screws, the same ones we removed earlier. We're going to switch back to a Phillips one and remove these screws. Now we're gonna lift up this piece like this. More Phillips screws. We're gonna get this X clamp out of the way for the Phillips screws. Now we're going to remove this piece by lifting it up like that. Now we're going to have to flip the console over and be careful because the board is very sensitive. You do not want to break it. We're going to lift up this cover like that. And we're going to have to remove the power supply because there's a connector that is connecting to the board. So we're going to switch back to our Torx T8 and remove these screws. I'm gonna lift up this piece. And now we're gonna lift up the power supply and just lift it out. And this is the cable that was getting in the way. So we're just gonna grab it by the side and I'm going to hold the connector part of the board down because sometimes this connector comes out and that's very bad. You don't want that to happen. You can also use tweezers to pull it out. Now I'm going to hold the board from the other side because there's literally nothing holding it in. And now I'm going to be able to lift out the board like that. So as you can see, this thermal paste, wait, is this the stock paste? Did we ever replace this? I can't remember. I don't know if I did. It kind of looks stock. So maybe it is. I see some dust accumulation in the heatsink. So what I'm actually going to do, and this is not a step that I had planned on doing, but I'm going to take this heatsink out and do some cleaning on this because that's unacceptable. Another thing to keep in mind is you can only replace liquid metal on heat sinks that are copper. And as you can see, it's copper where the processor meets it. So that makes the PS4 a candidate. But otherwise, if you had an aluminum heat sink, you can't use liquid metal. Let's switch back to the Phillips bit. Remove the heat sink. There's one screw here, another one here. And sometimes there's three on certain models. Maybe that's the earlier PS3, but there might be another screw. Maybe not, maybe. And yeah, see the heat sink is caked up with dust. There's some dust in the fan as well. So we're going to clean this out. We're going to grab some paper towels and we're going to clean this bullshit out. Ugh.
I'm not done cleaning the heat sink yet, but I'm gonna show you guys how to remove the old paste. You can get some paper towels, wipe the old paste off. At this point, it's gonna be dry as hell anyways. You wipe it down, do an initial wipe. Then you get some isopropyl alcohol from fasttechstore.com. You spray it on the heat sink, let it sit for like a few minutes. We're gonna do the same thing on the motherboard. Now, while I am gonna be cleaning out the heat sinks with liquids, I don't wanna clean the, the motherboard with liquids because it's, it's hard to get it all dried out. And I am on a time crunch here, but I'm gonna clean the system as much as possible. And I, without wetting the board at all, or putting it in a solution, even though there are some areas we can put some alcohol on, and just wipe it down. So we're gonna get some paper towel, also wipe down the APU. Be very careful when working in this area because you don't wanna damage this component. Trust me on that. Now we're gonna put some alcohol on the APU. You can also use Arc Clean, which we also sell on our site, but rubbing alcohol works just fine. Now let's start wiping the heat sink down. If it's soaked. Now we're gonna wipe off the alcohol and any residue of the old thermal paste. And to anyone who's gonna complain about the little thermal paste left in there that's not even on the APU chip, I suggest you go get laid, okay? Because I know some, some people, not all the viewers, but some viewers like to complain about everything. And those people can frankly go fuck themselves. At this point, I'm gonna get my conductor knot out of the packaging. And this is one of the best liquid metal solutions on the market. We're gonna get it out. And the key with liquid metal is not putting too much. And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna put like a very small P amount. And this right here, I think is a good amount. Uh, it looks like a lot to some people. Some of you who have maybe done this before might think it's too much, but from where I'm sitting, it's not because it's flat down and it's not high up. Now we're gonna use the applicator, which is also included in the kit and we're just gonna spread it around and you want to make sure none of this gets onto these components on the side of the chip because then if you do the APU goes boom and no more PS4 Pro and then we're just gonna spread it around you want to make sure that all of the chips covered and make sure that you don't get any of this stuff on the components on on the board or anywhere else other than the surface of the die and I want to get it all the way to the edges make sure nothing's uncovered now that I've got a decent application of liquid metal and I put some light on it as you can see all of the surface of the chip is covered and once I get a finish that looks like this now I can uh, start reassembling but before I start reassembling this system I'm gonna give it some more cleaning we're gonna clean out the rest of this system because it's frankly atrocious so I'm gonna remove these screws two screws that hold the fan in and uh, as you can see this is filthy so we're gonna clean this I'll remove the disk drive as well Now I'm gonna 
take the disk drive out. This also is filthy. I'm gonna go give these components a nice clean and then we're gonna assemble everything back together. I've power washed the case and you want to make sure that there's no liquid anywhere at all. I power washed the inside of the case as well because this thing was nasty and you can see what it looked like before and what it looks like after when I'm done drying it up. Much better. So I've given all of these components a nice clean and you can see where they're at now from where they were before. As you can see, it's a lot better now. And now I'm gonna start putting this back into the case, which I've also cleaned out. As you can see, it's a lot better than what it looked like before. I'm gonna put the case in and we gotta install some other components as well. Back in, including the disk drive. I tried getting these stains out, but no matter how hard I tried, they wouldn't come out. And I didn't want to push too much because it's because they're on the ribbon cables and those components can be damaged. And we don't have too many spares for those lying around. We need them for customers. Now we're gonna install the screws that hold the disc drive in. We're gonna install this long screw Phillips, which goes in here. three and then there's another one here that holds it in next in is the fan one screw goes in here and another one goes in here there's only two screws that hold it in the other one goes in through the case now we're going to install the heat sink back in Make sure all these cables stay out of the way. Make sure this fan connector sticks out like that. Now we're gonna install the heat sink screws back in. Another one goes in here. Now we can install the motherboard back in with the reapplied liquid metal. Okay, I'm gonna put the HDMI and the port side in first and then I just push it down, get these cables out of the way. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm gonna put the heatsink clamp back on. I'll put this piece back on. And the heat sink clamp goes on like this. And now we're gonna start putting these screws in, but you don't wanna tighten one and then tighten the other. You wanna do them slowly. So like, as you can see, these are still snug, but I'll put another one in, not tighten it all the way yet. Not tighten it yet. Now I'm gonna start tightening them, but diagonally. So I do this and then I go back here. I do this part. Then I go back. A little bit more on this side. Now here, and then a little bit here. And then a little bit here. Tighten it all the way. Boom. Now we're gonna install this piece on and we're gonna install the Phillips screws that hold it in.
Now we're gonna install the back plate. We're gonna get these cables out of the way. Make sure none of them are interfering. We're gonna install the disk drive cables. That one goes in with a clip. As I demonstrated, these ones will just push in. This is for the this is for the power button. This is for the jack button. We're gonna install this antenna cable here. We're gonna put it up top, line it up, and then push down. Push down, push down. We're gonna install the fan connector, kind of important. Then we're gonna install this cable in. Now we're gonna install the Phillips screws that go here and here. Now before I go any further, I'm gonna just quickly put my power supply in and test this system to make sure that it works. This cable is supposed to go in through here. If it doesn't turn on, then I fucked up, but I know it will. Cause I'm too good. I've been in the game too long, literally. Boom, that's a good sign. Everything works. This drive spinning. So now I'm gonna start reassembling this thing because now I know for sure that it works. Now we're gonna switch back to the Torx T8 and we're gonna install the Torx T8 screws. These ones are Torx T8 as I mentioned and the bit you need is available in the Fastech Pro Auto Kit. Imagine if we didn't have this kit, how, how much longer it would take to do this job. This was supposed to be a 25, 30 minute job, but it turned into a two hour job. But I hope you guys enjoy the content. And like, as always, I ask that you press the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. part of the heat sink it's a little bit bent out of shape we can just push it down with our driver that must have happened during the cleaning process that's okay I've bent it back in place we've gotten all the screws in on this side now we can flip it over and we're gonna reinstall this shield and there's some more screws. There's some short Torx screws that go in here. And the tall ones go here and here.
Now we're gonna reinstall the hard drive, sliding it in. Phillips screw for the hard drive. This one's hard to mix up because it's a unique screw. Now we can put the bottom panel back on, the one with these. The front goes on first, okay? The front you gotta hook up like that. And then you can push it on at the back and slide it on like that. Click, click, click. The sound of success. And I had cleaned out the case too, so big difference from where it was. Finally, we got the three Torx T8H security screws that we gotta install. The hard drive cover is the only thing I forgot to clean. So we're gonna give it a good wipe down. Forgot to power wash this when I washed the case, but that's okay. Now that we've cleaned that out, we're gonna reinstall the final piece of the puzzle and finish this tedious job, which is supposed to be a very simple job. You can choose to put the stickers back on if you had them. And now this job's done. Now I'm gonna plug it in on our TV and put it under the thermal cam, run Doom again, and see what kind of temperature drop we got. And in the middle of the system, you get a reading of about 25, 28 degrees. In the power supply area, it's getting particularly hot, 37. 36, 28.9 at the back, or the exhaust is. I think the exhaust heat should be more than that. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, about 27. As you can see, I'd idle the liquid metal, or as Northridge Fix likes to say, liquid metal has made a difference. We're gonna be giving away this PS5 Digital Edition and this extra controller. To enter this giveaway, all you gotta do is buy our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. Links for this are gonna be in the description box and the top comment. And the second thing you have to do is be a subscriber to this YouTube channel, and most of you have already been doing that. So thank you for being a subscriber to our channel and showing your support over all these years. The third and final requirement for this giveaway is that you leave a comment in the comment section with your order number. When you order one of these kits, you'll get an order number and make sure to include that in the comment section of this video if you want to enter. And that's it. That's all you got to do to get yourself this brand new PS5 digital edition. There's no way to get one of these in stores at the moment, so we figured this was a great time to do a giveaway, show our support to our fans, and at the same time, promote a great product which you're gonna use in the future, and it's gonna save you a lot of time when doing electronics disassemblies. Links are gonna be in the description box and the top comment, and I'll include all the details in text so no one's confused. Make sure to enter before the date that you see on the screen is November 15th, 2022. And we'll announce the winner on the date that I mentioned earlier. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel to find out who won this PS5. The winner will be sent an email and make sure you include a phone number when you make your order. That way we have your phone number so we can call you when you win your PS5. That's it for me for today. Best of luck to everyone playing. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech. And I'll see you in the next one.